Hello, and welcome to episode two of our Tech Talks. If you haven't seen episode one yet, check out the link in the description to the Datsun 240Z Tech Talk. Um, so episode two, this is the Jaguar SS, which has come for a complete electric conversion. Uh, we're gonna get into more detail about what components we're using and all that kind of stuff, so stay tuned. So starting at the front of this car, when it first came in, when we opened the bonnet, we were really upset to how little space there was. We were expecting a lot more. Actually, this is a really small amount of space to play with, so we were a bit disappointed. Uh, but we managed to cram this drive unit in here just about. We'll get into more detail about that in a second. Um, another cool feature we've added is charge port. So if you undo this, you charge it up where the original radiator was. We've machined a CNC billet aluminium retainer here, which locks onto the original Type 2 socket. So we're very happy with that. And it looks awesome. Coming up to the front here, um, this is a Gen 3 Nissan Leaf stack. So it's a PDM on top, which is basically a charger and DC to DC converter. It also has rapid charging contactors inside it, for shadow mode. Underneath that is the inverter, and then underneath that is the electric motor. We've made a custom billet um, adapter plate going into a reduction gearbox straight to the rear axle um, with a custom prop shaft. Um, so starting with this, if you come and check this out, this is pretty cool. It kind of, we like this because it kind of looks like an engine, um, which is quite exciting because most battery boxes in cars look a bit boring. They're rectangular and a bit simple, but this is, it just looks cool. We're gonna, we're gonna make our own aluminum cover, which goes over here with, you know, all pressed aluminum with nice TIG welds going around, looking really polished and nice, but that's to come. And um, so we remove this. It looks like you'd expect camshafts and all sorts under here, but no, that's not the case. So this is the PDM module. So this has basically got a DC to DC converter, which basically charges your 12 volt system, um, which comes out here straight to this. Um, so the high voltage will come in under here. So it'll take the high voltage, step it down to 14 volts and charge that. Uh, we've also got AC charging. So the AC coming in here will come into this PDM and then the PDM will basically make it charge the, the battery. So it will convert the AC to DC and charge the battery pack. And it also has um, rapid charging contactors here for Shadow mode, which we're not actually Im uh, implementing in this build, but we, we have done in, in, in a Bentley. But this one's not going to have a Shadow mode, so we're not, we're not using it in this one. But well, what we love about this is it's so well designed and so well engineered, and it's such a great package to use in this application. So this, this project definitely didn't come without its um, challenges. It was, you know, it's, it's some tough moments. I'm going to bring Johnny over to, um, we're going to chat about, well, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So, hello, this is Johnny. Um, so what do you reckon, Johnny? So, yeah, as Jack said, this is our VCU. Um, it's, it's not just a, a VCU for the motor. It also controls other functionality in the car. Uh, it's all CAN bus controlled, so our gauges, um, and all the um, controls in the um, car are, are controlled by that as well. Um, we decided to mount up the front here just for aesthetics and also um, space. And actually... also the beautiful job Johnny's done of the low voltage wiring. Of course, naturally. Of I mean, course. that was that was a good day when we when we uh... actually it was actually my idea, but anyway, that's fair. gloss over that. Yeah, gloss yeah. over that. I, I did the actual yeah. work, so yeah. that's all that matters. Yep. Um, yes. So yeah, the VCU. Um, controlling the leaf, uh, basically spoofs it to think that it's still in a Nissan leaf, so you still get the beautiful, smooth running of the uh, uh, the, the OEM yeah. functionality. You can push, you can change the logic boards in, in the inverter and push more power, but to be honest, from, from what the testing we've done, the original Nissan leaf map is so good and so smooth and plenty for a car like this. So we, Especially with just rod brakes. It doesn't yeah. need a whole lot of power. Very um, true. From, the 1930s. I don't know what I had originally, but it's certainly a step up either way. Yeah. Um, Tell them about your coolant lines. Oh, the coolant lines, only the best. It's very so powerful. we've used the original uh, radiator, um, just because if we used a small, it's probably a bit overkill, but if we use a small radiator, you'd see straight through the gear grill and it wouldn't be very aesthetically pleasing. So we've utilized that, um, machined up some reduction. Um, Spigots. Thank you. Um, to bring it down to the pipe size required. 
um, and then manufacture these hard lines which we bend and um, fabricate in-house uh, just to make it look aesthetically pleasing and provide the necessary cooling. As you can tell, it's beautiful workmanship, as you'd expect. <laughs> and then the, so mounting this motor, it was unbelievably tight. We had like millimeters to play with, yes. the, and the steering box is quite literally like <coughs> kissing them. I mean, it's really, really all very close. In millimeters. But we've managed sure. to mount it off the original OEM engine mounts, which we kind of have to do for, for uh, regulation stuff. Yes. So yeah, so Johnny's fabricated these really, really nice, um, really, really beautiful um, steel um, engine mounts. Steel on that side, alley on this side. Yeah. Just and also, to yes. utilize the space. And also, Johnny cadded up a really nice billet aluminium adapter plate, which was a big, it was a big, was the biggest billet we've ever seen. It was sort of about it was a massive, great big billet. It was a machine next door. Um, it was a scary moment. It was a scary moment. Out. Yeah. Let's we usually 3D print adapter plates before we uh, before we get them manufactured to test them, but it was so big it would have taken about two weeks to print yeah. it. So we decided to bite the bullet and send the drawing and luckily everything worked perfectly, so. Absolutely. Yeah, so on the back of the adapter plate, we've got a off the shelf reduction gearbox. Um, the beauty of the Nissan Leafs is that you can get everything, the motor, the inverter and the PDM all together and it's far more um, economical to buy it that way than to buy off the shelf motors, um, which means that the customer can then spend a little bit more on the reduction gearbox, not having to use the original gearbox, which gives us um, a quieter drive line um, and an easier installation. Yeah. Um, and Johnny has also managed to design um, the adapters for the flanges on the gearbox and the, and the differential. So he's made these uh, really nice CNC billet adapters um, he's, he's actually designed them so they can be used an off-the-shelf prop, an off-the-shelf CV prop. So we don't we don't even have to manufacture a prop. We can just buy one off the shelf and bolt it straight up. I was going to show you a mock-up, but it still yeah. bolts the gearbox. So yeah. Another day. So yeah, that's probably mu that's pretty much most areas covered on the front. So we go around to the back and, and we'll talk about batteries because we haven't discussed anything about batteries yet. <laughs> Although we were kind of cursed with the front. Uh, the front engine bay being so small, we were blessed with the rear end because we had a lot of space. To a degree. There's a lot of junk in this trunk. Um, <laughs> no, there isn't junk in the trunk, there's really nice batteries. Balls it up, chap. So we've, um, we've actually, we've had to, do you want to talk about the rear, the rear and how, what we've had to do? Well, there was plenty of space, but not in all the right places. So we have had to split it up into two battery boxes to get the pack in that we need uh, for this application. Um, so we've got a, a bottom battery box mounted in this frame um, and then another battery box on top for the rest of the batteries just to make it possible to get the whole pack in. Because if we made it out of one box, we'd never get it through the aperture of, of the boot aperture. Yeah. So we're using uh, B, um, VW ID3 modules in this car. 12S. 12S. And how many modules are it again? Seven. Seven. So Is it seven? Six. How many? Four, five, six, seven. Seven. Or is there two in there? Two in there. Is there Six. two in there? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Six. Yeah, so we've had to split up the two, make two separate battery boxes. We'd love to do all in one, but we would never have got it in. So um, so that's the smaller battery box of two. If we walk over here, we can show you work in progress of the largest style battery box. So this is all been drawn on CAD and all been worked out um, to fit. Um, it's got four ID3 modules here. Um, we've got the Orion BMS. We have HV buzz bars. All, this is all very much unfinished. We've got a safety disconnect, HV connectors here. Um, so yeah, this, these are pretty, pretty impressive, these modules. They're 6.85 kilowatt hours each per module. So with, I think, God, I can't do the maths that quickly, but we're hoping for about 150 mile range in this car. Yeah. We've just batteries in the rear and we're going to probably upgrade the rear suspension as well to, to cope with the extra weight on the rear axle. So yeah, in, in the top battery box, uh, we've also managed to incorporate our HVJB into it. Um, so that's both positive and negative contactors, the pre-charge circuit, the resistor and the pre-charge contactor, obviously our BMS, current sensor, as you can see, it's all a work in progress. Um, but it just keeps it all neat and tidy um, and keeps the H, all, all the high voltage within the battery box so yeah. there's less places with the high voltage. 
And um, for those non-EV nerds, HDJB stands for High Voltage Junction Box. And it's kind of where all the high said. voltage goes and go, goes in and out, basically. Yes. Yeah. Especially with the uh, Orion, it's really important that it's as close as possible to the batteries because you've got cell voltage tap wires, which are all high voltage. So the less of them coming outside of a battery box, the better, just for definitely, safety. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's our HDJB slash battery box for the Jaguar SS. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. The only thing we didn't say oh, yeah. is that you fabricated this. Yes, I did. Yeah. With my bare made hands. Made in house, all yeah. made in house. So everything's made in house. The only thing we farmed out was the laser cuttings. So we fold it and we TIG weld it. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so we, yeah, we made it all in house nice. over in our fabrication area and it's brought over here for, a for a kind of assembly. We're doing a final fit, checking everything works and then it will all be taken apart again and this will be sent off to the powder coaters, come back and we'll do a final assembly. Ready for the motor. Yeah. Thanks for watching our second tech talk. I've been told to tell you to like and subscribe. Um, very important. Um, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, number three tech talk will probably be about the Daimler. Daimler, yeah. Before Daimler. it goes back. Yeah. Daimler. Thanks for watching. See you next time.